Good morning and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Clemson. We are so glad that you have joined us and we also want to say a special welcome to any of you who might be joining us as a visitor this morning. We're glad that you are part of this worship experience. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our moms and uh, I know this is a different Mother's Day. Uh, typically, Mother's Day is one of the highest attendance days of the year in, in worship. Uh, but we're glad you're with us this morning, and we wish you a happy Mother's Day. Also, you hopefully have been noticing, we've been highlighting on Facebook uh, pictures of moms and their kids and quotes from their children. And uh, we appreciate everyone that sent in pictures and quotes about their mom, and we hope that that is helping to uh, make this Mother's Day weekend uh, very special. Also, you may have been tagged uh, as a church member. Uh, we're playing the game of Tag Your It, and um, if you have been tagged, hopefully you have tagged someone else, so be on the lookout for those signs to appear in your yard over the next several days. Uh, in the way of other announcements for our senior adults, there's an exercise class, a virtual class happening each Wednesday from 1030 to 1110. And you're invited to be part of that class. And the link to join is a part of the weekly email that you receive from us. Also this morning, as we gather to worship and as we celebrate moms and give praise, we also want to remember in our thoughts and prayers uh, Debbie Hennessy and her family. Debbie received word just a couple of days ago of the tragic loss of her sister Wheezy in a car accident. And um, Debbie, please know that uh, we are thinking of you and, and holding you close even as we are separated. But everyone, please keep them in your prayers. In the life of our student ministry, we're excited that next Sunday is Youth Sunday. This is always a very fun time for our students to lead us in the various forms of worship. It's also a time where we recognize our high school graduates, so we'll have a time where we celebrate with them and honor them during the service as well. I also want to remind everybody about our weekly Zoom meetings. Uh, each Sunday we meet at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. We have Junior Senior at 5 p.m. on Sundays, and then of course Wednesday we have Bible study, and that starts at 5 p.m. For our college students, uh, our homegrown students will have a meeting this Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, you'll get a Zoom link from me uh, so that we can all join together for a time of fellowship to catch up with one another and to offer prayer for one another as well. So we hope you'll join us for all those opportunities. If you have any questions about either of these ministries, please make sure to contact me. Thanks. Good morning. I wanted to highlight a few articles that you will see on your email each week. On Monday mornings at 1030, our men's prayer group meets and they would love for you to join them. We have a virtual link for that meeting. Um, on Wednesdays, uh, Rusty and I have a Bible study for adults during lunch and we would love for you to join us as well through Zoom on that one. We're finishing up our disciple study this week where we will be studying about Nathaniel and Matthew, James and Thaddeus. As always, we invite you to um, join us on Facebook and uh, Instagram to see articles, um, pictures throughout the week. And I want to encourage you to download our church app on the news and events page and ministry pages. Um, everything you get on that email will be right there handy for you anytime you need it to find out what's going on in the life of the church. God bless. Our children continue to gather virtually twice each week over Zoom for Mission Friends, Bible Study, and Sunday School. The times and links for those gatherings are emailed each week and also posted on our church app. Well, today is a very special day, not only as we celebrate Mother's Day, but also the gift of our children leading us in worship. We hope today is a very meaningful day day for you and a blessing for you as we worship together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord.
boys and girls. In just a little bit, we'll hear our Bible story for today, read by some of you. It's the story of Jesus as a 12-year-old boy. His family had come to Jerusalem to celebrate a special festival. Then, on their way back home to Nazareth, Jesus' parents realized that he was missing. After much searching, Jesus' parents finally found him. He was at church learning about God. Jesus' parents were upset, and they let Jesus know how much he had worried them. But Jesus told them that they should have known he'd be at church. You know, this story reminds us that Jesus was once a child, just like you. Jesus experienced some of the very same things you do. And even Jesus' parents got frustrated with him. That's one of the most special things about Jesus, that he is just like us. And he is the perfect example to teach us and show us how to live and grow in our faith, in God and loving others. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for our story today, for teaching us that Jesus is just like us, and we can look to him to show us how to live, how to love you, and how to love others. Amen. I invite you now to join us in our litany for Mother's Day. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank God for the mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. Thank God for the mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. Thank God for the mothers of today. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God for the soon to be mothers. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank God for the mothers with hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death 
and must carry on. Thank God for the mothers who are so strong. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to mother everyone else. Thank Thank God for the mothers in spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. My kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and we forgive our sins. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Every year, Jesus' parents took their family to Jerusalem for a special festival called Passover. When Jesus was 12 years old, he went with his parents to the festival. When the festival was over, and Jesus' parents left to go back home. Jesus stayed in Jerusalem, but his parents thought he was with them. Jesus' parents travel for almost the whole day, thanking Jesus for this, his brothers and sisters. When they stopped for a rest, Jesus' parents, parents realized he wasn't with them, and they started looking to see what if he was with the other family members or friends. And, their group, but no one knew where Jesus was. So Jesus' parents went all the way back to Jerusalem to look for him. They looked for three whole days before they finally found him sitting in the temple courts. 
Not only did they see him in the temple, but Jesus was sitting with the religious teachers and listening to them and asking them questions. His parents also saw that the religious leaders were very impressed with how smart Jesus was about his knowledge of God. His parents felt very proud and they were glad he was safe, but they were also upset that he had not stayed with them. Mary asked Jesus, Why did you stay in Jerusalem when we left, son? We were so worried when we couldn't find you. Jesus replied, Why didn't you understand, Mom? I had to stay in the temple that is God's home. His mother didn't understand, but the way Jesus said this made her think that there was something very special about her son. Then Jesus went with his parents, and they traveled back to Nazareth. Jesus' mom would always remember this moment as Jesus grew older and grew closer to God. After three days, they found him in the temple courts. Twelve-year-old Jesus was missing for three days. Can you imagine how frantic and scared Mary and Joseph must have been? It's scary enough if your child wanders off for three minutes, much less three days. If a child goes missing today for three days, there's a national search. There's been Amber Alerts. There's been press conferences, and most likely parents have made a plea on television we have all seen these reports, and just thinking about it causes parents to feel anxious. Every parent can relate to this story of the young Jesus because every parent fears the notion that their child could go missing. We can also relate to this story because Jesus' parents thought he was with them. But in the chaos of being family and thinking that he was with the other parent or the other kids, Jesus was overlooked. Imagine, overlooking Jesus. In fact, I had thought about that being the title, overlooking Jesus, because the truth is, all of us at times overlook Jesus. Last week, when we looked at the two disciples walking the road to Emmaus, and this supposed stranger came up, it was Jesus, but they didn't realize it. They were overlooking Jesus. It happens. Also, I can't think about this story of the young Jesus without thinking about that movie from years ago, Home Alone, and that first scene when the entire family oversleeps and they realize they might miss their flight and they're all scrambling and there's a whole big family trying to all get in vehicles that have come to pick them up and they think everybody is accounted for except, of course, Kevin, who was left behind. <laughs> there was another potential title for this sermon, Left Behind. Think about it. Jesus was even left behind. While we can relate in part to this situation, we also need to realize that this culture was different than ours. Jesus' family would have traveled in a large group with extended family and friends. And when the festival was over, the women and children would have started out first for the journey home because, of course, they had more stuff to deal with. And then the men would travel later at a more leisurely pace. Imagine that, ladies. Happy Mother's Day. It's also likely that Mary thought Jesus was with Joseph and Joseph thought Jesus was with his mother and the other children. And then, of course, late in the day, whenever they stopped for the evening and took count, they would discover he was missing. And we should also consider that the scene in Jerusalem was chaotic. We're talking about massive crowds of people who had made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover 
and also a culture where children would not have necessarily stayed right with their parents. In our culture, we, we tend to keep an eye on them at all times. In this culture, they would have been had more freedom. But then, here's something else I really want us to hear. That it begins with the phrase, after three days, they found him. So for three days, they didn't know where Jesus was. Luke is giving us some foreshadowing here. There would come another day when Jesus would be missing for three days and his mom would be fearful that he was gone. But then she would be told he's alive. So even as a young boy... Mary is being given a glimpse into her son's extraordinary life. This story also tells us that Jesus' parents were devout in their faith and they were making sure that their children were being raised according to their customs and faith traditions. Jesus was 12. 12 was a defining moment for Jesus as a Jewish boy. Twelve was when he would be considered a man. He would be required to begin Torah training. Twelve is when Jewish boys would experience bar mitzvah. Twelve is where we get the, the, the idea of the age of accountability. It comes from that religious tradition. Twelve is also would have been Jesus' first trip to the festival of the Passover and his exposure to the temple courts in Jerusalem. What Mary and Joseph didn't realize was just how much of a defining moment this festival would prove to be. Luke tells us that when they finally found Jesus, he was sitting among the religious teachers fully engaged in their teaching and even asking them questions. I mean, there's not many 12-year-old boys that are fully engaged in anything, maybe with the exception of a video game. And then it says the religious teachers were amazed by his questions and the knowledge that Jesus was already displaying. Now I can imagine that when his parents first saw him, they wanted to go straight to him and hug him and tell him how glad they were that he was safe. And then they probably wanted to shake him and threaten his life if he ever did that again. But when Mary and Joseph see what is happening... When they see Jesus sitting with these teachers, they are amazed and proud and perhaps perplexed. And it just sort of stops them in their tracks. And they just take it in for a moment. But then... After a couple of moments, Mary springs into mom mode and she says, Son... In fact, maybe what Mary said was Jesus of Joseph from Nazareth. You know, she uses the full name so that he knows he's in trouble. Do you know how worried we've been looking for you? How could you do this to us? And then, and then the young Jesus kind of plays the ultimate wild card. Why are you looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in God's house? <laughs> I mean, how can a parent stay mad at a kid who says, Didn't you know I had to be at church? You're always wanting me to go to church and grow closer to God, right? <laughs> Scripture says Mary and Joseph didn't understand what he was saying. And again, we can relate because most parents don't get their adolescence logic. But it also says Jesus went with them and obeyed them. And then we don't hear anything else about Jesus until he's around 30 when he is baptized by John. So maybe he was just grounded for a long time. 
as relieved and perplexed as Mary and Joseph must have been, I suspect they would look back later and realize that this was a defining moment in Jesus' life and in theirs. And Mary, Mary would treasure this memory as she would treasure many others as Jesus' life and ministry unfolded. As we celebrate Children's Sunday and Mother's Day, let us celebrate this story about the young Jesus that reminds us of the faith and the hope and prayers that we have that our children will have a defining moment, a defining moment in faith when they know that God is working in their life and they begin to sense God's calling for their future. And let's celebrate and remember that part of nurturing our kids in faith is allowing them to explore faith to ask questions, and to be inquisitive in ways that sometimes will leave us scratching our heads because we don't get it. And I would also say to all of our kids and our youth that Jesus grew in knowledge of God and started understanding God's calling upon his life because he practiced his faith. Because he went to temple, he studied scripture, he listened to people who could teach him about God. And he did this from an early age and he did it for years and years. He did it all the way until he became an adult before he began to fully comprehend what God was doing with his life. You see, faith is a journey that each of you can and should embrace. I was reading an article just the other day from a former seminary professor and and mentor of mine, Dr. Chuck Bug. He's been writing a blog called Finding God in the Pandemic. And a couple of days ago, he wrote number five based on John 14. And in this article, Dr. Bug was reminiscing about his childhood pastor, the faithful pastor who nurtured him and his family in faith, who baptized him. And he was recalling how this pastor was very faithful to caring for his flock But he was criticized occasionally for not being a, quote, very good preacher. And that that criticism would grow louder each year when they would have the revival and the flashy evangelist would come in and the the music leader that looked like they just walked off of a TV set. But he said what he remembered as he grew older was that this pastor was just steady as he goes and that he just nurtured and fed them spiritual food week after week and taught them the scriptures it wasn't fancy but as he became an adult he realized it helped him to have a secure and real faith and Dr. Bug says that to believe is to be alive in God The word, root word of believe, he says, is to live. And what we all strive for and what Jesus tries to teach us is to have a faith that helps us be alive in God. To live life more fully. So again, let all of us avail ourselves to the teachings of Christ to those who can help lead us and guide us in faith so that we can have lives that are alive in God, so that each of us can have that defining moment where we realize that God is and that we are loved by God 
and that God is going to guide and use all of our lives. And parents, please remember that when we allow our kids this journey and treasure their own growth in our hearts, it might just prove to be a moment or moments that lead them to say, don't worry, Mom. My life will be lived in the presence of God. Or, I guess you can just try and ground them for 18 years. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh. To reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the Spirit. We are called to be the church. Celebrate God's presence. To love and serve others. To seek justice and resist evil. And to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. Our judge and our hope. In life, life and death, death and in life, life beyond death. death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We hope that this time of worship today has been meaningful for you and your family. We appreciate so much our children and their parents who participated in worship today. We hope that all the ways that we are trying to keep you connected as a family of faith to our worship each week is meaningful for you. Next Sunday, as Matt mentioned in the life of the church, we will be celebrating our youth and particularly our high school seniors. And so we hope again that you will join us uh, as we once again offer opportunities for, for our youth to be part of that service. For our benediction this morning, I want to use some of the words that uh, Dr. Chuck Bug used as he closed his article that I mentioned in my service. So hear these words as our benediction. Live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, listen reverently, pray daily, and then leave the rest to God. Amen. Bye.